All right, so I will get started one more minute just to give people a chance. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through um, everything. I've got a lot to get through, so I want to just kind of power through as much as I can. But put your um, questions and things like that in the chat. And then at the end, we'll do the Q&A and you can ask me any questions. And that was the best one. We, I did this a couple of weeks ago, but I've added some more content. And um, it was just so much fun just answering people's questions and learning about each other. And yeah, the questions were great. It was really good. All righty, let's see. And I've only just started doing this sort of stuff. So um, we've been traveling, I'll tell you a bit more about our story, but we've been traveling now full time for the past five years, five plus years. And um, without having to do, um, I always say without having to backpack, without, not there's anything wrong with it, but any, having to backpack or without having to become an influencer or, you know, do this sort of stuff. We've had um, different businesses and I'll share those later, but um, I'm learning how to be on camera very daunting <laughs> it takes some getting used to doesn't it Tegan it sure does yeah and like I said it's lovely to be able to talk to people rather than just look at look at the screen and talk to myself so all right so let's get into it I'm going to share my screen so I can take you through the um, slides that I've prepared much more interesting than just looking at my mug I can tell you and this is recorded, so if, um, if you want to go back and listen to anything else, I'll send you out the recording along with some other goodies as we go through. Alrighty, so how we went location independent, um, it was over five years ago, and how you can too. There's a lot of, um, you know, you can call it location independent, digital nomad, um, lots of different sort of terms for it, but basically creating a freedom lifestyle, and that's really what we wanted. So I just need to get the little thing working here there we go okay so um already done this where in the world are you so we've got um canada represented we've got cambodia kind of represented <laughs> we've got um america represented in a few different states and it's a nice small group so i really do appreciate that i actually prefer small groups because i'm just starting out so um so that i can get to know people and yeah, um, it's not about numbers for me. It's about if I can help, you know, even just one person to kind of step into their dream life that they've always wanted, you know, before having to wait till retirement and before it's too late, then my heart will be full. So, okay. Um, what is your dream? So tell me just in the chat, pop it in the chat. What are, What is it that like, give me one of your dreams, one of the places you want to do. What do you want to do? Do you want to go um, vanning around? Do you want van life? Do you want to, you know, um, pack up your kids and, and travel around Europe, you know, for a year? Or do you want to do, you want to do what we're doing, which is, you know, full-time um, travel lifestyle? Or do you want to just have that freedom to um, and flexibility to actually be able to just do whatever you want, go visit people whenever you want? So pop in the chat that while I just try and find my chat that's just gone missing somewhere. <laughs> uh, I always say um, we actually own a digital marketing agency and I always say my husband's the digital and I'm the marketing. So you can ask me anything about marketing, but um, technology, it's just fun and games for me. So, and yeah, and since I shared the screen, so there we are, there's the chat. Okay, cool. All right, um, Sarah, I still don't know how to say it. So I'm just gonna call you Sarah. We'll call it the Australian version of your name if I'm getting it wrong. Um, I'm looking all kinds of ideas, looking for freedom. Yeah, um, would look at ex-US travel, but as a single female, I'm nervous. I traveled a lot uh, before I met my other half, um, so solo, so I can help you out with that as well. Um, and it's, you know, it is, um, I'm just letting someone else in. How do we do that when that's in there? Okay. Um, yeah, traveling solo is, is very, very different. It is for sure, um, but you can still do it. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's a great way to, um, to expand your <laughs> timing of dogs. Um, it's a great way to really just build your courage. I became a lot more courageous in traveling solo. And I even, I did have some scary experiences and there's things you can do to watch out for that. Um, you know, one of those was in Rome, which is one of my, still one of my favorite cities, but um, yeah. And there's, you've just got to be a little bit more careful. All right, so next thing, let's get into this. Um, we want to help you to experience this too. Um, this was actually our 
view um oh puppy i can see puppy uh, i'm a dog mad dog lover so <laughs> uh you, you best friends now for life look at that so beautiful um so yeah this was actually our view during covid um lockdown last year so we were because of the lifestyle people were like oh my gosh you're so lucky and i even felt really guilty for a, quite a long time but the reality was is that because of the choices we'd made prior we had the flexibility to take advantage of you know um kind of uh, opportunities, I suppose, to kind of make choices that really worked for us instead of um, being, you know, restricted. And we got to have this beautiful view, um, you know, and it changed every day. It was just so gorgeous. And um, so, yeah, um, having a freedom lifestyle enables you to have that flexibility to move and change um, with your, you know, different opportunities that present themselves. And just being able to change, you know, at the moment's notice. Where is that? Um, hi, Kim. Um, that was actually in Playa del Carmen. So um, it was a, a gorgeous penthouse apartment that, um, yeah, during the COVID season, we literally um, pretty much only just paid the, the owner's expenses, really, um, and kept that going for him and looked after the house for him, um, the apartment. So it was a really great opportunity that presented itself. And we were like, we thought, we thought COVID would be open over in a few months. <laughs> so funny and um yeah so we ended up being there for for most of the year and um, we've moved since then but um yeah it was a wonderful wonderful opportunity so yeah really nice um i've done or i'm doing some videos on my youtube channel about um why i recommend player for digital nomads you know in their 40s and 50s and why i don't recommend it as well so watch out for those and join my channel if you'd like um, Hi, I can't see a name. I can't see a name. I can see a new face though. Um, if you want to pop in chat, um, um, pop in the chat what your name is I, so I can say hi properly, that would be really lovely. I love speaking to people's faces. All right, so what we're going to cover today is the steps we got, get, got, steps we took to get where we are, um, the income you need to do it, um, and how to, oh, it's Kim. Hi, Kim. Thank you. Um, how to determine if this is the right lifestyle for you, three things you definitely shouldn't do, um, and how we can help you to make this a dream life in all, you know, a few different resources and things like that that we can help you with. Okay. Um, you're in the right place if you're a business owner, if you're an employee, if you're an empty mister, if you're a mum or dad with kids, if you're just bored with the mundane, if you're a solo traveller, um, if you don't want to wait till retirement, basically. And this is something that's really, um, really close to my heart. And one of the reasons why I decided to do this before I met my husband um, was because a dear friend of mine didn't make it past 40. And I was like, what is what 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 <laughs> you know and it was just like to watch her fight her fight and to um to know her dreams sorry it still tears me up um i'm gonna get better at this um to know what her dreams were and that she wouldn't get to do them i was like what am i doing this is crazy you know um i'm working my tush off um for someone else and i've got all these dreams and what if i don't what if I never get to experience them? So um, she was um, she was pretty much the catalyst for me deciding. And then I met my husband and convinced him to do this, this crazy lifestyle. So, um, okay, if you stay till the end, um, sorry, if you, if you stay to the end, um, I'll give you a checklist that, that takes you through all that I talk about today. And it's just a great one to kind of use to, depending on where you're at, um, you know, it gives you the steps that you need to take that I'm going to go through in um, more detail today. All right, I do have some notes. So excuse me as my eyes kind of go um, across to the side here. Otherwise, I lose tangents. And as I was saying earlier, um, I'm new at this. So yeah, bear with me. Um, what this isn't is a get rich quick scheme. Um, there's nothing wrong with things like multi-level marketing and, um, and you know, um, Bitcoin and all those sorts of things, but they do promote kind of getting rich really quickly. Um, and, you know, they do work to a certain degree as well, but this is more about, I'll be talking more about um, kind of um, businesses, um, online businesses, um, bricks and mortar businesses what to do with those and things like that um it's not about backpacking nothing against backpacking but at my age i really love comfort <laughs> and so yeah i can see kim nodding um you know and so 
I never wanted to give up. Like in Australia, um, it's kind of a normal thing for in your 20s to backpack. I didn't do that. I grew businesses. So um, that was my thing and kind of missed that backpacking era. And the thought of having to carry my backpack now, I just... I just don't want to do that. I don't want to stay in hostels. I want to stay comfortably. So that was my criteria. And I wanted to find a way to be able to travel full time and still have that lifestyle. Um, it doesn't require endless selfies. It's not about becoming an influencer. As I was saying earlier, when people were coming on, um, this is new to me. So this is, um, you know, we've created a, a last five years of full time travel without having to be an influencer or do any of those sorts of things. Um, and it's without using your savings. Um, at our age, we don't want to, um, you know, you don't want to jeopardise your retirement, um, but I also want you to live now as well, you know, so it's about balancing those two and it's with, you know, I don't want you to go out with, go without anything. All right. It's very much about daring to dream and stepping outside the box. So society tells us that, you know, we're supposed to, especially as women, sorry, Ken, Ken here, there as well. But I mean, guys get this too, you know, you're supposed to work hard and, you know, provide for your family and, and build a career and do all those things. And yes, you should, you know, do those things to a degree. But what about living as well? And so it's about kind of thinking outside the box. When I first started thinking of this, I was like, how can I do this? How can I make this a, a reality? And slowly, slowly things unfolded and, and I found different ways and kind of explored different ways. Nowadays, there's um, you know, a lot more sort of things out there that can help you. There's still not a lot for, for you know, for in your 40s and 50s. Um, it's very much catered towards the 20 year olds, which it's so much easier when you're 20. You just kind of pack up your flat, dump your stuff at your parents' house and then grab your backpack and say, see ya. <laughs> so a little bit more, you know, a little bit different for us when we're older, you know, you might have grown up kids or, or even younger kids, you know, teenage kids. Um, you might have, you know, older, elderly parents. Um, we have to, you know, go back each year to see our elderly parents. So our responsibilities are a little bit different. Okay, so why now is the best time? So yes, traveling at the moment is really, really restricted, but it takes realistically at least six months to set all this up and to set your life up and to declutter and to get your finances in order and to get your business in order and to you know just get your health insurance in order and to get all these things done it takes a takes a minimum of six months and to do that and so that's why now is kind of the perfect time for doing it while we're you know still watching and waiting for the world to open up and, and seeing how that goes. Um, you've got the time to prepare. You've, you know, there's going to be different offers. Um, you can start at home first. You've got more people online, which is a good and a bad thing. Um, and you've got, you know, more opportunities, which is why more people online is a good thing. And, you know, like I said before, we, we don't know what tomorrow brings. So um, why not now? <laughs> okay. Our story, um, it's, we... Let's see, um, I kind of touched on a little bit already, but basically I was working in corporate. I was working for a national company in Australia. Um, I did get a little bit of travel with that. So that was great, but um, I was working crazy amount of hours. And when I wasn't traveling, I was having to commute for hours on end. Um, and it was just, it was nice income, I must say. Um, I was rewarded for that hard work. But um, as far as life and lifestyle, you know, I had, I had a garage with like a, a classic car, a motorbike. I had four wardrobes full of clothes that some were still with tags on. Please don't hate me. Don't judge me. I have changed since then. <laughs> um, you know, I had every single piece of sporting equipment, some like I had two. So I had like two mountain bikes. So if someone wanted to come with me, they could. Way too much stuff. And um, so and still really, really, really unhappy because I was making someone else's dream come true because that's what society told me. You know, it told me that I had to, you know, work hard and um, wait till retirement and then you can enjoy your life. No, thanks. No, thanks. I wanted to find a different way. So um, I decided I was actually on a trip in um, uh, Europe. I was in um, Italy at the time and I'll never forget it. I was... Um, I was actually, I remember sitting in this beautiful little villa in Italy 
And I remember I had the four hour work week. So a lot of you may be familiar with that. And um, I'd read that and I remember sitting there and I'm not an overly religious person. I'm a spiritual person, but um, um, and I remember sitting there and praying and going, please, please, please universe, show me how I can do this full time. I just love travel so much, you know, show me a way. And then um, on that same trip, <laughs> I didn't expect it, uh, the universe to answer so quickly. Um, I um, got a text when I was in Rome um, doing a bus tour, um, um, those open bus tours. I remember getting a text from an, a, a, a colleague saying the company's folding and they took with them um, a huge amount of commissions that they owed me. Um, we got a very small redundancy payout and I was like, okay, well, I didn't expect the universe to answer that quickly, but now what? And what did I do? I went and got myself another corporate job because that's what you do. I couldn't see past it to actually see how I could actually make this work. Um, so it took me another year and a half. And in that time, I met my husband and oh, boyfriend and um, we did a road trip across America and um, yeah and we I've completely lost way of my slides here this was me traveling solo in Hawaii my first trip I don't know what the whole serious face is maybe it's my blue steel look I have no idea but um, this is me in Yosemite one of my favorite favorite national parks that I used to think was called Yosemite um, just because of the way it's spelt <laughs> So I used to call it Yosemite until someone corrected me. It's kind of funny. Um, and this was some of the trips that I did as a solo person. Sorry, I'm just catching myself up. So um, I was actually in Italy, as I said, and um, yeah, went, went and got myself a corporate job. And, um, and then I met my husband, but I was still looking for ways to um, make my dream come true. I'd created this little vision board of all the places I wanted to visit in the world. And I just, you know, I just wanted to find a way to do it. Um, then I met my, my husband and we did a road trip across America. And ladies, if you're single, best thing to do when you meet someone and you're dating to test them out. He should, hopefully he's not listening. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but it really was like, we did this road trip. We'd been dating for um, about three months. <laughs> You've seen me, he's wondering what, he's, what I'm talking about now. Uh, we, we'd been dating for about three months. And I said to him, I said, oh, I'm going to America, you know. And, and he goes, and I said, oh, you should come too, as a joke, thinking he wouldn't. And being a Kiwi, pretty laid back guy, he went, yeah, sure, why not? And I was like, okay. <laughs> so we actually did a road trip across America where we realised that we could put up with each other. Um, and it was a really great testing point. That was our little RV um, from Cruise America. Thank you very much. And um, yeah, it was a wonderful, wonderful trip. And then we came back. Um, we did eventually get married actually after we started traveling full time. No, he didn't wear that jacket to the wedding. That was a bit of a, a joke. Um, not that there's anything wrong with it, but um, yeah, a bit too colorful. So yeah, um, and I had to convince him kind of to buy into my dream, I suppose. And he comes from a completely different world. Um, I'm an entrepreneur, um, you know, uh, from way back. And he's very much, you know, get a job. He worked for the um, New Zealand Air Force. So he was in um, Air Force. Then he worked for Air New Zealand, pardon me. Um, so he was used to very much, you know, have a job, do the you know career thing and do that so I had to convince him um, that there was a different way to do it there is nothing 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 special about us and this is I put this slide in here because it's really true honestly we're just your everyday people who um, you know have been working hard trying to you know create a life for ourselves and things like that um, and we do have some skills, but you don't get to, you know, your 40s and 50s without having some skills. And I can honestly hand on heart say that no matter what job you're in, no matter what career you've had, um, it can turn into an income producing um, way that you can have that flexibility and that freedom. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go through. We're very much about um, laid back. So um, just letting someone late in. Um, very much about um, a laid back. This is, this is the epitome of how we travel. I'm a little bit more adventurous than my husband, so I might do some different sort of uh, things. 
Um, but it, we're very laid back. We spend about a month to three months in each location. So it's not about, you know, ticking off the bucket list and rushing around and spending three days here and three days there. I couldn't think of anything more exhausting. Um, so <laughs> we, we love to spend a reasonable amount of time and take our time. So if you've got a bad weather day, you can, you know, book the next day, book the tour for the next day when it's perfect weather day, you know, and you get to see the best experiences. You get to have local experiences and, um, yeah, because you're there for longer rather than just being a tourist. So um, let me see. I think I missed one then. Mm. How we did it. How we did it. Okay, let's get into that. Um, let me just catch up. And just for those that have just joined, if you've got any questions, you can pop them in the chat and I will get to those at the end. So if you think of anything, pop it in there. Um, let me see. All right. Why now? I'm just da, da, da. Okay, I probably missed half of the things here, but that's okay. Um, and if you've just joined us, just make sure you pop yourself on mute if there's any background noise. Thank you. Alrighty, so um, let me see. Here we go. All right, let's see. I'm just going to mute Donna. There we go. Okay, cool. All right, so let's get into the how part of it. I, I did this, I did a similar webinar, I've added more content to this one, but I did this a couple of weeks ago and it went so smoothly. Today, not so much, but it's all about being real, right? Okay, so the first phase is very much about clarifying what you want to, what you want to experience. And this was really um, important because in our first year of travel, full-time travel, like we, we um, you know, it was a huge learning experience. So now what I share with people is to really map out and take your time. Like I had that vision board, which was really, you know, important about creating that vision. And I believe wholeheartedly that it really helped me to, um, you know, get to where we were to the point of actually buying our one-way ticket around the world and off we go and um, so you know it's it's really important to really 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 get clear on what you want to do the experiences you want to have what you do like what you don't like and you might think you know but actually most of the time we don't take the time to do it we just book a vacation or a holiday as we call them in Australia and we you know and we just kind of go okay I want to do that and you go and do it and then okay I want to do that you might know that you know maybe you don't like camping but I'd love you to just to dive deeper into it and think about what your travel style is what sort of experiences you really want to have um, what sort of why you want to have those experiences like one of the most amazing things experiences I had was um, sitting with some Vietnamese women um, at the back of their restaurant while they made these little desserts where they wrap this rice um, and it's a sweet rice um, and they wrap it in, in um, uh, banana leaves and you know, and they were just sitting there laughing, talking. We, we hardly knew, like I, my Vietnamese wasn't great, um, still isn't. Um, their English really wasn't very good, but we had the most amazing experience. And, um, you know, those are the kind of things I really love to do. I actually had my wedding dress made in Vietnam and that's a whole, in the middle of their worst floods ever. It was quite an interesting experience. So, um, you know, it's really, really important. I can't stress enough that before you really take on this lifestyle is that you clarify you know what you really love to do what you want to do map out your first year and the first mistake the, the other thing is to actually do a trial run so when we did our road trip across america after that we came back and uh, i managed to convince my husband to go to bali and bali's kind of really um a lot of Australians go to Bali. It's a little bit by, like, a bit like Cancun is to Americans. It's kind of where they go for summer break kind of things. Um, and But for me, it was very, very different because for me, my experience in Bali, my first experience was actually looking after my friend's villa. So I was house sitting in Bali and she um, actually, it was the beginning of my journey big time because I was in back in the sec, second corporate job, you know, my, not my second one, but my corporate job after Rome. And, um, and I was, um, I wanted to take a, like a, a holiday. My friend had said, hey, my villa's here, come and come and stay. And she's, and I said to my boss, hey, I want a couple of weeks off. You know, I've been working really hard. My numbers are good. You know, everything's really great. And, um, and he said, no, you can't. And I went, but I really want to go. And he said, no, you can't. And then I talked to my other friend who um, was fighting cancer at the time. And I just went, I'm just going to do it. 
And now I don't recommend this, okay, as the, the avenue, the way to do it. But I ended up spending um, a couple of months in Bali and it really got in the middle of like nowhere. And it was um, a really amazing, incredible experience. And so um, that kind of started the whole next phase of working out how I could actually do it. So doing the trial run is really, really important. I actually, my husband and I, once we kind of decided we wanted to do this we did a trial run again to Bali but we did um, the northern we actually did a, a road trip around Bali um, on scooters and then we went to an, a remote island um, as well I think I've got a picture of it so this was actually where we were it was one of the remote islands in Bali and I do recommend it it's really beautiful it's Gili, Gili Mina I think one of the Gilies there's three Gili islands and the power would go out every single day and so we would be like in this grass hut with the internet and our computers and we'd be working away and then the power would go out. And so we'd just go swimming and snorkeling and enjoy it and then come back and the power would be on and we'd help them reconnect the, the internet again and, and, you know, off we'd go again. And we did, um, we did six weeks. So we did a six-week trial. And as part of the process that I recommend for people is to do a trial run like that where you actually get to kind of practice um, working remotely Two reasons. Number one, just to experience it so that you can iron out the kinks. And number two is so that you can make sure that it's actually the lifestyle for you. So that's really important. Okay, plan out your first year. So first of all, you get clear with like what sort of um, personality you are, what sort of travel you want to do, why you want to do it, the type of places you want to go to. And then you map out your first year. And we always recommend... Um, start in a familiar place because no matter how much planning you put into it, actually buying that ticket, knowing you're not coming back is really scary. And so that's why my course is actually called Courage to Travel because it takes so much courage to actually, um, you know, take those steps and so, and to buy that ticket and actually make it happen. And so, you know, it's, it, we always, we, for that first year, we really, I really struggled. Um, we both did in different ways. And one of the things was, is because, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of familiarity, but the first place we went to was Bali. And so um, just in case we had to go back, you know, if we, if something went wrong, if something, you know, so we went to Bali first, so always start in a familiar place. Step up gradually as well is really important um, to make sure that you don't kind of, I wouldn't, because I haven't um, done, I hadn't done a lot of um, volunteer work then, I probably wouldn't put myself in the middle of Africa um, volunteering, although they do look after you pretty well there, but, um, you know, I wouldn't put myself in an extremely foreign place, you know, where I don't speak the language, I don't understand the customs, I don't, I wouldn't put myself under that amount of pressure, because it's scary enough, just taking the plunge to actually do that. Let me just see if I can get my um, husband's attention. Can you close the door? Can you close the door, please? Because the garbage man's coming. We've had the dogs, the garbage man, everyone today. <laughs> So um, always just step up gradually. So start somewhere that's kind of a little bit more familiar. Perhaps um, I'm taking a guess here um, that we're all English speaking. So start somewhere that is English speaking um, um, or that you've been to before. So if you've been to Vietnam before or Cambodia before, um, then, you know, that's fine. But step it up gradually and go at a slower pace. Don't try and, don't try and cram it in because when you, it's very unsettling um, moving all the time. Um, well, it is for me and a lot of my friends that I've, I've um, you know, talked to a lot. Um, and so just really pacing yourself so that you can kind of, um, you know, just take your time is, is much easier. And a little secret, the three, six and three. So this is where um, really making sure that you do the planning before and you do a trial run is really important because you're going to get homesick on week three guaranteed that is going to be a really hard point okay and I've seen this time and time and time again and at week six okay and at three months after that you're pretty much right okay but these these times and I know dear friends of ours who packed up their home packed up their business and turned their actually turned their bricks and mortar business online um, and did all those sorts of things and then headed off and came back six weeks later. Now, thankfully, 
they had rented out their house to their children. So that wasn't too bad. But I also know of people that, had, that went back home. Um, they lasted a few, you know, the three months and went back home because it just wasn't for them, you know. And so it's really, um, if you can stick through those sticking points, um, I can guarantee you that it, it really is an incredible lifestyle. And also the other thing, plan to circle back home because, um, you know, in your 40s and 50s, um, we have health stuff that comes up. And, um, you know, I'm going through that fabulous, enjoyable experience of menopause. Um, and, you know, and there's different things that you want to go and see your regular GP for um, or regular doctor for. Um, I get my skin checked um, every single year because I'm a red freckly person, red skinned, red haired freckly person. So I have to be really super careful. So um, I always go back to the same doctor. Um, it's been a bit hard the last year for, <laughs> um, but uh, with restrictions, can't get home. But um, that's what we like to do. So just plan to circle back, at least for that first year, especially. After that, eh, you know, it's really a personal choice thing. I um, have no idea why that slide. Oh, yes, I know where that slide's in there. Um, because Paris is always going to be there. So go at your own pace, circle back. Um, don't try and cram everything into your first year. Um, we did end up in Paris in our first year. Um, oh, Lisa. Um, Lisa's joining. Um, we did end up in Paris for our first year, in our first year, and it was magical, absolutely incredible. Um, but don't try and cram absolutely everything in. Please, please, please give yourself space and time in that first year to really just enjoy, iron out those things, and really just to soak up the experience of your new lifestyle and get used to it. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> nice to see you from your face. How are you going? Okay, so... Um, so mistake number two. So just going through and recapping again. So first of all, the first step is to really get clarity on where you want to go, who you are, what type of travel person you are. Also your travel budget as well. Get really clear on that. Second thing is to um, do a test run. Um, and the third thing is to map out your first year and do the research on it as well. So, yeah, so really important that you do your research on the things that are important to you. So we always research accommodation and things like that. We always book like a, just a week or two just in an Airbnb and then we go exploring the area and find, you know, different places that we really want to stay at and different deals as well. Um, so one of the things, though, is always research your visas, um, especially at the moment with the different um, countries and the different requirements from COVID, extremely, extremely important, um, you know, what their requirements are and they change so rapidly as well so you've just got to keep on your toes we were on our way to um to we we're in hong kong on our way to um vietnam and my husband does the visa research and he'd made he'd made a mistake we got to the airport and luckily we'd allowed a few hours we got to the airport and um the um went to check in and they said where's your visas and we went oh no it's just like bali when you get there you get your visa and they went no so um over a thousand dollars later we found a online option, which seemed like the shonkiest deal where they said, you know, that you had to don't go through, go through customs, we'll meet you at the airport and everything. And we were like, oh, my gosh, could just see what could go wrong with it. But we made our flight because of it. We got on there and this lovely man in a nice shirt um, approached us um, with a, a, a thing on his shirt um, and took our, took our passports um, along with a whole heap of other people. And we were like, what could go wrong? <laughs> um, and, but it all worked out in the end. So that's fine. But it was a very, very, very stressful time. So really important to do your research. Um, when you map out your first year, it's always important to look at the different costs of, um, you know, accommodation, to look at the different, you know, transportation. We got caught going from um, JFK Airport to what's the other one in America, um, the main one um, in New York, two different airports, can't think of it. Um, and it cost us over 180 American dollars just to get there because we hadn't done our research. So um, someone's helping me out in the chat and telling me, uh, yes, Newark. Newark, 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 Newark. LaGuardia. No, I think it's I think it's the Newark one. Yeah, so there's two two there, and yeah, 180 American dollars later it was the cheapest way we could get to the second airport. So yeah, 
uh, Tina, I'm just going to mute you. Welcome, welcome. Um, so yeah, really, really important that you do your research um, and yeah, take the time to do that, which is why now's the perfect time. So you can map this out, so you can plan it out over the next six months, and then you don't have to go through stressful airport experiences when your husband gets the, um, the visas wrong. <laughs> I did forgive him, don't worry, I make mistakes too. All right, so how much do you need? So we've gone through all those sorts of things. Now it comes down to, well, how much, you know, income? How am I going to afford this? And this is the thing where most people get stuck. I've got a Facebook group called Travel with Tegan. You're welcome to join. I hope you will. Um, and in that group, um, there's three questions. And one of them is, you know, what's the challenge? What's holding you back? And for a large percentage of people, it's it's really money. And, you know, and that was what the thing that stopped me for many, many years. I thought that I had to save, 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 save and then travel and just take, you know, holidays or vacations when I could and save up. And then when I retire, I could actually get to travel, you know, full time. But it's not the case. And you don't have to be a backpacker to do it. So what I want to ask you is put in the chat, how much do you think? So we we basically travel majority of our um uh, long haul flights are business class. We don't see the point in um, short haul flights because they're only short haul um, and domestic flights. We have stayed in um, very, very comfortably. So majority of five star kind of levels, um, most of the time four minimum, bare minimum. Um, and so as we've traveled around the world for the last five plus years. So how much do you think, just to, to give me an idea, how much do you think our travel expenses would be, our living expenses, so except for food, but I'm call, talking accommodation, flights, transport. Um, we didn't do too many $180 taxi fares, I can tell you, but um, we did do one. Um, how much do you think, just pop in the chat, how much do you think it would cost us um, per year to travel comfortably full time? And just pop in there and just let me know what you think it is while I catch up with my notes as to where I'm at. Nice, Kim. Yeah, yeah. So Kim has said 100K. Yep. And this is for both of us. Lisa, about 80. Yep. Yep. Anyone else care to, care to take a bid? 60 for Sarah. Ken, 100. Yep. Nice. Yeah. So this is exactly what I thought as well. Okay. And um, 18. Okay. Dania. Dania. Okay. You are a little bit closer. You're, um, and is that, a, are you in, um, I can't remember, Dania, if you're in the US or if that's US dollars or not. Um, I think you are in the US from memory. So, yeah, so let me share with you how much it costs us per year. And this was for the for at least the first three years. Um, we've changed it a little bit um, lately. Canada, but thinking of what it would cost me in Cambodia. Right, yeah, Dania, right, got you. Yep, yeah, sorry, yes. Um, um, I told, I warned you before, I'm not great with names, so bear with me. <laughs> so thank you. So yeah, so Dania, you've, you know, traveled to Southeast Asia, so you have a little bit of an idea. And to give you an idea, what we do is we tend to go uh, like Southeast Asia, we always spend usually um, summers in Europe. Um, and I know Lisa, you spend um, your, a lot of time in Europe as well. I know you love that. So, um, and then we'll kind of go to the US, kind of over around that area. Um, um, or Canada or, or you know South America or somewhere around there so we tend to kind of like do that as a loop um, and then kind of loop that back home um, or to New Zealand um, at least once a year generally usually so um, this is 10,000 Australian dollars per year each so 20,000 for both of us um, so for a single person, it might cost a little bit more. Um, and only recently, we're now up to 30,000, right? So, and the way that we do this, I'm going to share with you some of the tricks that we have. And I share more in my like, YouTube channel that I've just started and in my Facebook group. Um, both are called Travel with Tegan. Um, and so it's it, the flights. So with flights, um, we, um, let me see if I've got to here. Yeah, so I'll start with flights. So with flights, we tend to, um, we've got some tricks up our sleeves. So one of them is you can actually bid for business class flights, depending on the different airlines. 
And a lot of people kind of think, oh gosh, I'd have to put in like thousands of dollars. Um, but often they'll tell you what the minimum bid is if you look into it. Um, and like one of them in particular, and I, I can't remember the name of the actual airline, but um, the was a minimum of 250. But most people would think, oh, I've got to put in a thousand or whatever. Um, we used to put in 255 or 260 or 300 at the most. And every single time, touch wood, don't have any wood here at the moment, touch wood, um, we would get it. So don't think that it has to be expensive. Um, recently, um, we were looking at private flights, private plane flights for, so, you know, smaller numbers of people, a little bit safer, a little bit different quarantine um, sort of setup and things like that. And it's not as expensive as you would imagine. And this is the thing I've always, since I kind of started this journey, I now question everything. I get curious about everything. Okay, if my mind thinks that catching a private plane has to be expensive, what if I'm wrong? What if it's not? What if there's a way to do it? A friend of mine needed to go and visit her, um, her mother who um, wasn't doing so well in America. And she looked at getting a private plane back because it was easier to get into Australia again with uh, coming in via that quarantine um, rather than coming on a, a you know, larger flight. And it was gonna cost $15,000 each to fly that leg from LA to Australia. That's a long way, that's a long flight. So not as expensive as you might think. The other thing we do is with accommodation, we tend to go to a location, book in a nice Airbnb or a hotel or something like that for a couple of weeks and then explore the locals. Nine times out of 10, you will find a cheaper place locally just by exploring the streets and places um, than you will. And it'll be a lot of the time a nicer experience because it's more of a local experience if that's what you like doing. Hence why you've got to work out your travel personality. So that's another thing that we do. You can often find cheaper places. Um, another trick to another thing that we do is we do house sitting. Um, and this is one way that you can really reduce your annual costs by doing house sitting. We love animals. So um, we were animal lovers. And so it's a way for us to um, have our fur baby cuddles um, that we miss so much without having to have a dog of our own. Um, because um, ours have passed away. And so we house sit, this was actually in Brittany, um, in um, Northern France. And actually, no, this one was in England. Um, we, we, yeah, in England. Um, but we've also done, we have got to house sit in Paris with views of, of the Eiffel Tower. It was incredible for two weeks. That was a shorter one. But most of the house sits we do are a month minimum or more. And they're only in luxurious places, um, you know, we, because we only want to stay luxuriously, you know, and so we've had the most incredible um, experiences throughout the world, and you get to live as a local. So in France, we, you know, get to walk up to the shop and try and ask for the right type of bread um, each morning, you know, things like that. We get to go to the local, um, you know, Bastide village, which is, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years old, um, and we just get to walk up to it. It's one of the places had, you know, looked out over it it's just yeah so and we don't charge for it some people actually do this as a business um, and you can do that and can you know quite you know get paid quite well for it especially for luxurious um, homes um, but yeah we don't charge for it it's just a mutual exchange you know we get to keep you know they get to keep their dogs in the routine and we get to spoil them and we get to experience life so, you know differently the other thing we do is we do have timeshare, two different types of timeshare. Um, please don't go and dive into timeshare because um, that's what we do. Please research it extensively because there's a lot of different ones. Um, I've had a lot to do with timeshare over the last um, 10 years. Um, actually, I've bought one 20 years ago. So over that period of time, you really need to do your research to make sure that they're really viable for you and that you can use them in the way that you need to. But one of the ways we have is that, yeah, we have um, a timeshare that has some great bonus deals. So we tend to use bonus deals because we have the flexibility um, to stay, you know, to change our location whenever we want, we manage for our, for our wedding to stay in some luxurious, um, gorgeous um, penthouses for all our guests in Bali for our wedding. And that cost us 500 a week. So really amazing, incredible. So that's some of the ways. The other thing too, as I said, with um, oh, accommodation is you can actually, if you go into Airbnb or, um, into um, 
booking.com and book 31 days, check out the price difference. 35 days, check out the price difference. So that's another little tip for you. But really it comes down to, I think this is in Bali, um, it really comes down to um, having the flexibility. So creating the lifestyle to have the flexibility so that you can kind of, you know, get the deals. Like um, one of my timeshares, if you book less than 45 days, your points can, my points can spread out to four weeks. It's brilliant. So there's, you know, that flexibility in creating that. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about having that flexibility and, and income. Now, I don't know what your backgrounds are, so I don't know if you want to put in there whether you're currently working for, for yourself or whether you've got a bricks and mortar business or whether you've got, um, you know, whether you, um, you're employed by a company and you work from home. Um, regardless of which sort of where you're at, I'll try and kind of answer all of those questions because we've gone through all of it. Clark had a bricks and mortar business. Um, I was working in corporate at the time. Um, and, you know, I've, yeah, we've, we've managed to kind of make that all work. So um, retired, Tina, bless you. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so retired already. I teach. Um, Dania, my husband works as a drafter, a designer. Yeah, okay. So these are all things that, you know, it's everyone's situations are going to be slightly different, um, but I can hand on heart promise you that there is a way to do this and without sacrificing okay um, it's just about thinking differently and and working out a way to do it so i'm very big on um you know creating a recurring income um that's something that really has um is the way the best way to um kind of um future proof your business your, your income so i'll talk a little bit more about that but yeah, we've managed to create our um, uh, different streams of income that we have um, without becoming an influencer. So um, I, I've only just started on Instagram. Um, I've just started doing YouTube. Um, as you can tell, I'm not very good at webinars, you know, that sort of thing. So um, without having to do all those things, we've created very, very comfortable income where we're still putting money away and growing our nest egg for retirement. We're still growing our savings. Um, we're about to look at buying, a, you know, a, a property, um, a, another property. So it's, you know, these are all the things that we're still doing, um, yeah, without having to go without. And I don't want to have to go without not at my age i've worked too hard you know i don't want to i don't want to have to go with that so let's talk a little bit more about the different options with that so um there's depending on where you are so if you if you've currently got a bricks and mortar business like clark had several staff um and you know we what we did with that is we actually um started setting up the business so that it could be run um, online and then we um, asked our staff whether they wanted to work from home uh, which is a little bit different often it's got it the other way around you've kind of got to ask your boss but thank you COVID for teaching a whole heap of bosses that we can all work from home <laughs> so um, you know and then we they were wrapped they were like yep let's do this um, and so that's how we kind of set it up um, for myself I um, quit my job when my boss wouldn't give me time off. And um, then I started my consultancy business. I don't recommend doing that. I recommend starting it on the side as a side hustle. Um, Cause yeah, otherwise it just puts you under a whole heap of pressure. Um, if you currently have a bricks and mortar business that you don't want to get rid of, um, that you don't want to put online or isn't, maybe it's a manufacturing or something to that effect, like a friend of ours um, manufactures, um, you know, a certain thing for, for houses, then you need to find a, a manager. Um, many moons ago, I had a chain of fitness studios and I used to travel um, a lot then as a solo person. Um, I'd travel for six weeks to three months at a time and my businesses um, still kept going. They actually worked better without me um, I'm kind of yeah I had really good managers in there <laughs> and they used to go no you don't have to come home yet Tegan it's all right <laughs> so that's something else that you can do is is do that I'm just going to move this so I'm actually looking at you um thing is I'm not using my notes very much um, the other thing you know you can you can sell um, courses online you can take that knowledge that you've got in your you know as I said before when you're in your 40s and your 50s you, you you don't get here 
without getting a lot of experience in stuff. <laughs> you might want to sell products. You might want to do what's called drop shipping, which is where <clears throat> you find a company who already has, you know, products and, and a customer service thing set up and you just do the promotion side of it um, where you don't actually have to deal with the customers. You might provide services. You might provide, want to become a coach. Um, you might want to help people, you know, to do all different sorts of things. There's so many different things that you can do with the experience that you have. You might want to trade on the stock market. You might want to trade with Bitcoin. You might want to, um, you know, do... Uh, you might want to just do real estate online, things like that. Um, you know, you might want to just rent out your property. If you own enough properties you, or property or property or properties, then you might want to rent. And that might give you enough income to still, because what we've learned today is your expenses are a lot less than what you expected. So, and there's lots of ways that you can make that happen. So um, I hope that kind of gives you a bit of a, a, an idea of some of the, the things that you could do. Um, I do have on my YouTube channel, I think I've loaded it up now, um, and on my website, there's 52 ways to fund um, full-time travel in your 40s and 50s. So you can download that and go through it. And I go through a lot more different options of different things you can do. And at the end of this session, I'm offering a few different things where um, if you stay to the end, you'll get a checklist of everything I've talked about um, that you can kind of take yourself through. Um, it's just a simple one, but it just helps you to kind of make sure you're doing things, you know, that you don't miss anything. Um, and also I'll be offering a... Um, a like a, a session to help you to work out if you just kind of look through that list of the 52 ways and just go, I don't know then you can either book a single session with me or you can do a group session and we'll nut out um, a, a way. And that comes with a, a nice little workbook um, where you can map out, kind of work out, you know, journal your way through working out your, your, what you can do um, to create this new lifestyle. Um, one of the things I'm really particular about, as I said before, is creating recurring income. But you can create recurring income in different ways. You know, renting out your property is recurring income. Um, we also um, are big believers in, in helping you to diversify your different income streams um, and also so that you have, you know, this lifestyle is so good um, because you, there's so many different opportunities, like um, just using Vietnam as an example, again, I've used it a lot today, but as an example, um, I had this idea, two different, I've got two different business ideas there, um, and one is, you know, that I don't think I'm going to do, so I'll share it, um, feel free to run with it, but, you know, the, the carts that, um, the street carts where you can buy food from, Okay, I think we could, that someone could actually clean, like um, do those and brand them and actually franchise them because, um, and that way you could help a lot of local people to actually afford them. Um, and you could have them all systemized and clean, like really super clean for Western um, tourists, you know, sort of um, beliefs. And, and you could actually um, have businesses and help the local people have businesses um, with these little carts and, you know, maintain them and everything like that. Um, and you could have a business like that. So there's a business idea that if you had the flexibility and the freedom, you could create another income stream in Vietnam and um, potentially speak to your accountant. But there's a lot of tax write-offs with that as well. <laughs> so, you know, there's all these different things once you get into this lifestyle that you can diversify in different ways. And that really creates a security that, you know, enabled us to be in a certain situation when COVID came and, and things like that. And I think people more and more are realising that, you know, these are, this is the way to go. Um, I've completely not even bothered with my notes. So, anyway. <laughs> um, so, hopefully I haven't missed anything, but... Q&A at the end, so just ask me away. So it brings me to this point of like, there is never, ever, ever a perfect time, except for now. So um, I know I've said it, and so those ladies that have joined earlier and Ken that joined earlier, um, you know, it's, it really is the perfect time to map this out and to plan this out um, and to create this different lifestyle. You may not want to travel next year and that's okay. You may want to just take the step of getting to becoming location independent and just having more time on your hands to do whatever you want. I am really, really, really a lazy entrepreneur, right? Um, but, you know, it's because I don't want to work hard like I was. 
So there's, you know, I, I don't want you to have to work hard. I want you to be able to enjoy it. So let's get you to that point where you're earning the income, that you've got the freedom to do whatever you want. Um, and whether that is full-time travel, great, fantastic. But if it's not, then whatever your dream is, let's make that possible. Okay, um, the next thing, so, oh yeah, I'm gonna go back. So the perfect time, so the next steps, we've gone through all that, we've gone through, um, Basically clarifying, making sure you do a trial run, making sure you create your income, making sure it's recurring income, um, making sure you do your research, those are the things. Now it comes to actually drawing a line in the sand and actually booking your flight and saying, this is the day I'm going to do it. And I'm trying to get through this as quickly as possible, but um, thank you for staying. I realise it's an hour, so thank you. Um, and this is really important part because it's pretty much the scariest when you actually say it, and let me give you a tip, tell your family and friends a week beforehand. So if you decide that, you know, um, what are we, um, August 4th next year is the day that you're going to do it, please tell them the week before in July, because that last week, everyone, it's really weird, even if they saw you the week before, they just think that they have to come and see you right at the end. And it's really the worst time, because you're trying to pack up and think of everything that you can possibly do. So it's really nice to just tell a little fib and go, or book a flight to like your first, like for us, we're from the Sunshine Coast, beautiful Sunshine Coast, which is where Lisa is from too. Um, and, you know, book, book a flight to Sydney and say, I'm on my way, see you everyone, bye. And then just take a week in Sydney, just to make sure you've got all the things you need that you've, you know, and just take a breath um, and then, you know, then, then take off and go. So that's just a little tip. But yeah, the next step is actually drawing a line in the sand and doing it because otherwise you won't. You really won't. Um, all these excuses and all these reasons, just like having children. I haven't been blessed with children, unfortunately, but my friends tell me it's just like there's never a perfect time to have children. There's never a perfect time with this either. But you never know what's going to happen in the future. So now might as well be it. All right, the next step after that is decluttering. Now, I actually think you should start decluttering way before this. <laughs> but worst case scenario, if you leave it till like you actually decide, yes, I'm going, then decluttering is a big thing. Um, it took me three trips back before I could get it down to my bare minimum, which is one box of um, super, super special things to me um, and five boxes of paperwork that I have to keep for seven years because of that's the law in Australia. Um, but when we get back there, I'll be able to get rid of a few of those. And that's what I have. So, um, but it took me a long time. So pace yourself. Do not, do not, do not try and do it all at once. It's too traumatic. It really is. It's just too traumatic. So if you want to enjoy the experience, start now, plan out in six months time to be decluttered. Um, do it in stages. I did garage sales. I did... Um, I did markets, which I really loved. Um, and then I did a gazillion trips um, to the charity stores um, and yeah, and just did things that gave a lot to my friends and family and everything like that. And um, took a lot of photos and videos of things that were really special to me and put that onto a, um, a, a screensaver. So I get to see that all the time. I now see my stuff more than I ever did before. Little things like that. So decluttering is the next thing after that. Mistake number three, I did promise you three mistakes. The third one is not doing a pre-pack. And this is why I say to, to people to um, tell their friends and family that they're going the week before, because um, that's when you should do a pre-pack. And a pre-pack is packing up exactly everything. I didn't do this. And um, D-Day came and I was supposed to be, we were supposed to be at the airport at 10 a.m., at 9.55, I still hadn't packed and everything that I had put aside would not fit into that suitcase. So I had to dump a box of stuff at my friend's place to hold in her garage. My husband was stressed out to the max. Um, it really wasn't an enjoyable start to our, to our, life, um, our lifestyle. So I highly recommend doing a pre-pack big time. And just, um, you know, I'm, a, I'm big on checklists and with our course, you get a whole heap of checklists. 
So um, doing a pre-pack, having the checklist and then leaving a week early, um, telling everyone you're going and actually, you know, either getting on a plane to a nearby city or not, um, but still being in your same country so that you can go and buy your favourite, um, you know, um, leave-in conditioner or something to that effect if you've forgotten it. Things like that you need to think about. So do a pre-pack just for the sake of your relationship and your sanity. Um, so I've gone through a lot. There is a lot to navigate. Those are three mistakes. Those are the steps that um, I believe that you should take. Um, it can get overwhelming. It really can. But I can honestly tell you that it is so, so worth it. Um, we actually went to the top of this and I don't know why I didn't put that picture in. But anyway, um, there's a really great view um, for those that don't know. And this is Singapore. Um, up the top there is this incredible pool. Um, and you can go up there and it's just the most amazing photos. It's really cool um, for those that like taking photos. Um, okay, so one of the things, uh, let me see. When we started out seven, seven years ago, kind of mapping all this out, we've been traveling now for over five years. Um, there really wasn't a lot of support out there. We had to navigate it out on our own. Um, and we had to work out, yeah, everything and all the mistakes. Our family thought we were nuts. No one supported us. They, um, for years, even my family um, still kept saying, when are you going to settle down? When are you going to, Clark's mum. So, so when are you going to come back and, and, and settle down, Clark? You know, <laughs> when are you going to get a real job, Clark? And, um, and it was just, it was really lonely. You know, there was all this stuff for like backpackers and everything, but there really wasn't a lot of stuff for, for this. So um, one of the things, this is the thing that having people around you that believe in you. So um, if it resonates with you, please join my, my Facebook group. That's where you'll find people that share the same thing. Um, and, you know, having the right people around you is really, really important. I was blessed to have my husband. I managed to convince him. But when I started this journey, I was doing it on my own. And it was just a matter, you know, it was just... Um, a bit of strategy, which I'll let you in on the secret another day. Um, maybe I'll do a video on it um, of how I convinced him. Um, it was a lot of leaving things in the right places. <laughs> okay. So, um, but yeah, I was all for doing it for myself. Um, and it is a journey and having that support is really important. Um, it's still the best, best thing five years on, even through COVID, the best thing we've ever done. Um, we have been stuck in Mexico um, during COVID. We thought that COVID would only last a few months um, and then we couldn't get home. We've tried several times and um, now it's just, it's just impossible at the moment um, unless you want to spend about 50 or 60K. Quite frankly, we'd rather put that into a property. So, um, but don't feel sorry for us because um, for those of you that missed the start, we were, you know, in a beautiful penthouse on the ocean front. So, it was coping, we were able to cope. And the reason we could do that is because we'd set our lifestyle up to be that way. All right, before we jump into the Q&As, um, let me share with you just three quick ways that we can, some resources that we can um, help you, you with um, your journey, wherever you are in your journey. And I'm creating more and more of these um, because I do have spare time. <laughs> and I just wanna help, I just, I don't know, I'm super, I, I'm super, super passionate about helping people to see to like inspiring people and I really really hope I have to inspire people to even if it's just one person to create a lifestyle like this if it's their dream because I was so thought this wasn't possible um, you know most people think it's not possible and um, to do it without having to save for so long. And I hope today I've shared with you enough that we'll at least plant a seed, that you'll explore some more. Um, and hopefully if this is your dream, whether it's full-time travel or, or part-time or whatever your dream is, I really hope that it, this has helped you. Um, let me share with you some resources that we have. Um, the first one is um, my course, which is starts on the 1st of September. Um, it's been a long time coming the courage to travel course and I call it the courage to travel I started calling it a courage to travel course before COVID not knowing that it really does take even more courage now to travel um, and there is some sections in there in regards to um, the traveling with COVID and so on but it's it's really a labor of my love and it's everything that we can come up with so far that um, you know the steps um, that we take you through and there's three phases of dreaming, planning and doing um, and it's everything that we've learned so far and you, if you choose to do it, you will get lifetime access 
Um, this is some of the things that you get out of it. And I won't take too long with this because I hate doing going to webinars where they just spend, you know, spend forever with all this sort of stuff. Um, if you want it, it's there um, and you can ask me more questions about it. Um, and while I'm going through this, please put questions about the lifestyle in the, the chat there. Um, but yeah, we'll help you choose the best trial location for you, map out your first year. Um, so we'll save you heaps of time with your research because we've traveled so much. Um, we'll help you create a realistic budget as well. Um, how to choose and set up your recurring income. We can help you with that. Um, and I've had several successful businesses even before I started traveling. Um, we'll help you re reduce your clutter. I'll hold your hand as you declutter. <laughs> um, and we'll minimize possible mistakes. And we'll hopefully, well, we will. We'll help you feel supported all the way through. Um, it's 12 modules. It is over a six month period. So it's quite a long course um, because there's so much in it. Um, and if, depending on where you are, um, you know, you'll still get a lot out of every single phase of it, the dreaming phase, the planning phase and the doing phase, regardless of where you're at. Um, but this is basically what it covers, clarifying your dream, um, vision boarding it because I'm big on vision boards. Uh, it's a different vision board, though. It's a travel vision board and it's done a very specific way to plan out um, so it works for you. Um, trial run takes you through researching your income, mapping your first year, setting a budget, recurring revenue, scaling, um, even starting a business. So starting a business, scaling a business, setting deadlines, decluttering, stress-free packing, and then sustaining it as well. And there's some tips in there too um, of um, if you're doing it as a couple as well. So that's the course doesn't want to click. These are the different options for you. Three different things. The main difference between them is the economy one is just the course with the monthly group call. This business one, you get one-on-one -on -one, um, with myself, um, one session a month for you. So it's a more personalized. And the third option is where it's one session a week. So if you're absolutely determined, and I know, for example, um, those in America, I'm not sure in Canada, um, I'm trying to keep track of all the different countries, but I know in America, you know, a lot more countries are opening up for you. Um, so you might want to speed this process up. So you might want to do the, the different, the other level, the more personalized hand holding um, option. So those are the options for you. Um, I'll put a link in there, decluttering now, former teacher. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's such a, oh, it's such a wonderful experience, decluttering. And I had so much stuff. I had a four bedroom house. I had a double split level garage that um, like seriously, my, my vintage car and my motorbike was crammed in there and had so much stuff, it was crazy. Um, I am offering a special discount because apparently that's what people do. And it is my first um, run of this course. So I am offering people 50% off. Um, so if you're in this webinar, this is the special offer for you um, because you've stuck with me for an hour and 15 almost. And, and I think you've all stuck with me. So I'm really, really grateful. Thank you so much. And I'll make sure you get that, um, that checklist in the very least. Um, yeah, so that's what you get. There's also three bonus courses that are tied into it that you'll see on the page, which I'll share with you in a second. Um, one is Courageous You, so it just helps you to tap into the courage that you have within you. The second one is the Visualization, so we dive into Vision Board a little bit more. And then the Technology course, which um, is coming out in, I think I said September, but it'll actually be October. So um, all you have to do is um, go to the link, which I'll put in there in a second and put in half off and you get the 50% off, which makes it very, very, very reasonable. And I'd love you to join me for my first group. It starts on the second of, sorry, the 1st of September. Um, in the meantime, you'll have the courageous you and the freedom visualization to go through. So that'll get you um, doing that first phase of, the, of, of what you need to do. The other thing I said, you're always one decision away from a totally different life. It's so true. It's so true. The day I made that decision, sitting in that little villa where I asked the universe to help me to find a way to full-time travel. Yeah, it's just how it happens. Okay. The other thing I said I mentioned to you is there's a brainstorming session. If you don't want to do the course, but you just want to get clear on what you should be doing, um, it's a single session. We all do it as a group, so we help each other. Um, and it's not scheduled yet because um, once people come into it, then I'll schedule a date that fits with, with everyone. Um, and that's only 
$19, it's normally $29. So I'll be doing those on regular sessions each month. Um, so yeah, that's another option for you if you just want to do a single session and kind of get clear on what you should be doing um, in regards to creating, you know, what business or what income stream you should be actually creating. And then a single session with myself, um, also at a discounted rate, because apparently that's what you do with webinars. And I don't mind because you've listened to me this far and I'm really grateful. So that's enough of me talking. Um, please put some questions in while I give you the links. I'm no good at doing two things at once, so I should have had the links open, and I did before, but I'm going to stop sharing, and um, let's see, we can do some Q&A, so quick one here, thank you so much, <laughs> do the escape, stop share, and then I'll get those links for you, um, all righty. That. Oh, that thing before. Egan, you mentioned yes. house sitting. Where mm. is there a website you use that tends to give you good contacts for that? Absolutely. I'll send you out the, um, the website if you don't mind, because two reasons. Um, it is an affiliate link. Uh, which is, again, another way to make money. We don't make money from the, the house sitting uh, house sitting link, but we do get, um, you get a discount. I think it's 20%. So every little bit helps. And we get a free month or something as well. So I'll share that with you if you don't mind. If that's okay, I'll send it with the email. Yeah, it's a fantastic. We have also, we house sat in Australia first. Um, and we used a different website there. Um, and then we house sat um, worldwide. And the one we, we use now is the worldwide one. And, oh, my gosh, you know, there's things like there's so much cool, there's cool experiences you can have. And I'm thinking maybe of um, putting together a little course for people to help them to be really good house sitters so you can get the really good house sits. But, like, you can, you can house sit a castle in England, like a castle and do you know what I mean? Like really cool things like that. So um, I don't know, I get excited about those sorts of things. All right. Um, anything, any other questions? Um, please ask. Glad you're doing this. Oh, thanks, Tina. Thank you. I feel really out of my depth. Um, kind of just, you know, so I hope I hope it's been really helpful. Um, I house set a private estate in England, Lisa. Oh, did you? Oh my gosh, I'd love to see the photos of that. It was amazing. So Lisa is um, on the Sunshine Coast. And um, yeah, she's, she's traveled extensively. That would have been so cool. Um, Ali, what if one isn't 100% pet lover? Are there equally as many options? Um, I wouldn't say equally, but there are still options because having your house, hang on, I need to take a mouthful. Ooh, missed my mouth. Um, so, there's a lot more um, pet sitting than there is um, just houses, but there are just houses. There's also house swapping as well. And, you know, there's different things that you can do to make that, make, you, make it so you feel safe with that as well, you know, locking cupboards, putting your personal things away and doing all those sorts of things. Um, so you can do house swapping as well. But you're better off having someone in your house, having your fridge being worked, especially if you're going away for, you know, a month or two or things like that. And there's a lot more people going on their holidays or even just for two weeks. They would prefer to have someone in the house because it's safer, you know. The gardens looked up, get looked after, or in the bigger houses, you know, um, the the maintenance people, the 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 cleaners still come, the um, you know the gardeners still come, and they've got someone looking after them um, and watching over. We actually um, looked over oversaw um, someone's renovations. That was interesting. That was an interesting. They had a, they had a foreman, but I had to kind of just keep the form and you know in mind what are the expenses what are your expenses now um 30 000, um australian dollars per annum is our expenses now i need to get this how can i learn more details yeah, teach you. My cost flights and holiday. okay um ken yep um i'll be doing more um content in the facebook group ah oh, it's here's something to that i'd love to know um you need special insurance for you. okay um I'm going, to, I'm, going to, I'm going to stop for a second and do one thing and find my links. <laughs> oh, I can see a tail wagging, Dania. <laughs> what sort of dog is it? Please tell he's me. He's a Labradoodle. So he's oh. mostly Poodle and then has some Labrador. So he's trying to oh. tell me that someone else is in the house and I haven't come said it's gone up oh. to say hi. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So um, 
No, no joke. Labradoodles are my favorite. They, they really are. They, I wouldn't spaniels. have said that until I got one. They're smart yeah. and clean and pleasant. They're funny. Yes. Anyway, enough about yes. Dogs. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. But you don't have to, you don't have to be animal lovers to, to make this work. Plenty of people do house sitting throughout the world. So um, I've just put the link in there for the Courage to Travel course. Let me just find the other ones that decided to close themselves down when good lesson for me in that, isn't it? And okay, here we go. There's um, one of my clients I do, um, she just does these single sessions with me. So I've just set, put through, a, you get a discount on that too. I've discounted that as well um, to say thank you. Um, so that's a single session. I've just put the link in there for. And yeah, and she just literally every few months, she just does a session with me and she has gone so far. She's got, she's got an affiliate business. So she's doing wonderful things there and um, completely, yeah, changed her, her life, which is really absolute blessing. I'm just so grateful to be able to do that. And this one is the group. So this is the group brainstorming session as well. Um, so you have all those little links there in the chat. Okay, let me go back to the questions. Okay, so expenses now, I covered that at 30,000 Australian. How can I learn more details specifically about your tips about learn how to low cost flights and accommodations? So um, I'll be doing more videos on YouTube. So subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Travel with Tegan. Um, Sorry, it's a bit pink. Um, I was going to say join my Facebook group and I've been thinking this, weighing this up. I started my Facebook group as just for women, but um, I know that a lot of women have partners and husbands and um, everything like that. So I'm actually considering and I'm um, actually considering making it just people that want to do this <laughs> um, and it's called Travel with Tegan. So if you can, if you want to, um, go there and click on the link to join. I'm very, very seriously considering that and fill in the questions and give me your email address in, in that one of the questions. And I'll make sure that I um, pop you into our, um, our list. And then we'll be sharing different things about the different flights and different accommodation um, tricks and things like that on a constant basis. I'm basically creating something every day because I love creating stuff. So um, yeah, so you'll, you'll, Get access to those. Um, do you need special insurance for house sitting? No, you don't, unless you're doing it as a business. So a friend of mine does um, house sitting and she charges, I want to say a couple of hundred dollars a night. She doesn't actually, um, if she stays over um, and she charges an hourly rate um, of 65 or 70, if she just goes there, you know, for an hour, walks the dogs, or feeds and pats the cat or um, feeds the horse or does whatever. Um, so yeah, she has to have proper insurance. And when you're traveling and doing that in different countries, if you're doing it as a business, you do need to check the insurances in the different countries to make sure that you're insurance and that you're covered. Um, same with health insurance and things like that. In some countries, if you're gonna be there for three months or more, um, like we're always in Europe um, for three to six months. So um, we look at different um, health insurances, like in Italy, for example. Um, so there's those sorts of things to consider as well. Um, yeah, when you're traveling, because sometimes it's cheaper and it's better to have the health insurance. Um, we always have travel insurance, but um, yeah, having a specific health insurance if you're going to be there for a long period of time. Um, is that 30k per person, Julie? No, that's 30k um, total. Um, my husband, bless his heart, is frugal. Um, and yet he'll go and spend thousands on a drone, but that's a whole other story. Um, he's a tech person. But um, and then, yeah, then we ended up selling it, but that's a whole other story. But um, that's 30,000 Australian together. So, um, yeah, you would find that it's, you know, maybe if you're looking at maybe a 20,000 for a single solo person, um, you know, there's, there's places like where we are here, you pay a little bit more. Um, like in Playa del Carmen, for example, um, two of my friends are here at the moment. They decided to follow what we were doing and come here. And to give you, I did, ah, it, to give you an idea, check out, um, I did some virtual tours. So I've done some virtual tours of different places and I talk about the different accommodation and things like that. 
Um, but to give you an idea, like a, a studio here, a nice studio near the beach, a block from the beach, um, you'll pay kind of 800, really modern with a pool on the rooftop and stuff like that. Um, whereas for a, um, like a, a two bedroom, um, quite reasonable, nice place with a, a private rooftop, um, a block from the beach, you might pay 1500. So, you know, there's still, there's, there's still, I, I'd say you'd be right in, for around 20, 25,000 at the absolute most, depending on what you want to spend your money on. You know, if you want to go to like, we're currently in Playa del Carmen, if we wanted to go to Tulum to a place called um, Izucra, Izuluka, Izulik, Iz, Az, Azulik, I think it's called, it's gorgeous. Um, then we might splurge and you know, do, a, do a staycation and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, everyone has different things that they do. My husband is very frugal, but we do live really, really comfortably. I don't go without anything. Um, I buy clothes when I want. I swap them over. I give clothes away a lot. I cycle those, and I think I did a video on that. So, yeah, different things like that. Um, any more questions? That's it for do we need insurance? I think I've covered all of that. Um, I'd love to see the private estate your house at, at some time, Lisa. That would be really cool. Um, this doesn't include full food costs. No, no, my husband's expensive to keep food wise. Um, we, he, uh, where we're at the moment, um, I think we average, I want to say, what does this cost us about? So it depends where you are. And this is the thing too, like in um, Vietnam, for example, um, and Thailand, like, we eat so cheaply. He, uh, for lunch, for example, he'll go down to a street cart and spend 20 cents to get a, a, a bang mi, which is a, um, a roll with meat and sauce and stuff in it. Um, and that's his lunch, 20 cents. So it's really hard to kind of, yeah, an average, I suppose, would be maybe if I include all my vitamins and things like that, um, I have a, a low immune issue like an immune deficiency thing so I have to have lots of vitamins um probably a couple of hundred a week um as an average um and you know up to kind of at the moment because we're in more of an expensive area I think we spend around 400 a week maybe um yeah but we have a private chef for that so <laughs> so it's kind of nice <laughs> like I said I like I don't love cooking, so we have a chef. <laughs> um, I'm up for that, yeah. <laughs> yes, Kim says I'm up for that, yeah. It's, um, and having had that now here, um, Trina, she's fantastic. So if you ever come to play at Carmen, oh my gosh, let me hook you up. She is just incredible. Um, and that's not all her expense, like that doesn't cost, that's not her total cost. We have like my vitamins and various other things as well. Um, but um yeah, it's, it's been, I've always wanted one. And she cooks, when I say chef, like she cooks for, for different people, but um, yeah, she does our breakfast, lunch and dinner. I love it. <laughs> so I think when I go to Vietnam, I'll be, um, I know in Italy, we're planning for summer in Italy next year and I'm looking for someone there. I actually want some, like a, a nonna to cook for me. I'd love the traditional cooking. Um, so I'd love that. And I'd love to help help someone because they don't have great support for their elderly. The families have to look after their elderly. So I'd love to kind of find someone like that. So if anyone's Italian and knows, um, you know, someone's grandma who's, um, struggling um, yeah summer next year we'll be looking for that so um, yeah um, so I hope that helps anything else uh, the checklist you mentioned well, yeah I'll email the checklist through to you looking forward to that actually I need to kind of do a roll call don't I to make sure that um, I have you all here bless you for staying on this is lovely it's my what is it Wednesday evening here so um, let me just quickly go through and is there other where in Italy have a few connections Lisa um Salento not Sorrento Salento so the heel of the the foot so Ali I've got you um Dania thank you it's been lovely seeing your beautiful face thank you so much uh, Donna I'm hoping I'll have your be able to work out your email addresses 
Julie, um, Ken, lovely to have a gentleman on here, and um, Kim, and lovely Lisa, thank you for being a familiar face, and Sarah, and Tina, Sarah, and Tina. So I'll make sure that that gets sent out to you. And uh, cool. This is the perfect time for a webinar. Tina, where are you again? You're in, were you, were you in Pennsylvania? I can't remember. I, it's such a bad short-term memory. Um, I need to stop telling myself that though, don't I? I've got a great memory. Arizona, Arizona. Oh my gosh, I love Arizona. <laughs> it is so beautiful. Oh my goodness, yeah. I've done a road trip through Arizona and thank you, Kim. Thank you. Great information. Uh, anyone that wants to leave now, I'm literally, I'll just be chatting. Thank you, Sarah. Um, yeah, Arizona, absolutely beautiful. I've done some trips through there. I ran out of um, gas, as you say, ran out of petrol um, in the middle of the desert <laughs> and um, I had the most incredible people help me. And they were, it was just really awesome. The colours in that state are just absolutely amazing. Thanks, Ken. Lovely to meet you virtually. Um, and I hope to see you again or somewhere on my YouTube or somewhere like that. And Ali, thank you. So I hope to see some of you in my course, if that resonates with you or a session, whatever works for you, I'm here to help. Um, Tina, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Dania, you're saying goodbye. Thank you. And um, cool. All righty. And we're all dropping off now. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Really loved it. It's dinner time for me now. I'm starving. <laughs> Thanks for everything. Thanks, Dania. I'll be, I'll reach out with other questions on Facebook. Awesome. Great. I should have asked everyone where they came from. Thank you. See you, Lisa. Bye. Bye, Julie. Julie, sorry, Julie. And bye, Donna. Thank you.